Gentlemen, it's Blind Date, and here is your host, Miss Scylla Black. Well, hello again, and welcome to Blind Date. And you know, I've been deluged. Deluged? What is deluged? <laughs> but another letter this week, and it says, oh, dear Scylla, I have a problem with my girlfriend. Would you go out with someone who wears thick green eyeshadow, purple blusher on the cheeks, and a plastic earring through the nose? <laughs> no, Chuck, I wouldn't. <laughs> and neither will she. <laughs> oh, you silly boy. Come on, let's get on with the show. And here are the three fellas that are going to play Blind Date tonight. Have a look at these. <laughs> well, lads, welcome to Blind Date. Let's start off with number one. Will you tell us your name and where you come from, Chuck? My name's Simon McCarthy and I come from Blackheath. What do you do for a living, love? A money broker. <laughs> Money as well? Not at all, no. What do you look for? What kind of qualities, apart from money, that you look for in, in your lady? Uh, good personality. Yeah. Good sense of humour. Yeah. Good looks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm married already, then. <laughs> <laughs> good luck for tonight, Thank sunshine. You. What about you, number two? Would you like to tell everybody your name and where you come from? <laughs> yes, my name is Matthew James Henry. I'm from Leeds and now living in Newcastle from time. Matthew James Henry. Yes. That's the full title. And you're from Leeds, but you live in Newcastle now. That's right, yes. Now, when did you make the move? Um, Matthew James about, Henry. <laughs> about eight years ago. Eight years ago? Why was that? Uh, for the job. And what is your job? I'm a disc jockey. You're a disc jockey? Do you know, I wouldn't have known that, would you? <laughs> get home to your house or your flat or whatever and you want to slap on a record uh, what kind of records do you play for your own amusement very laid-back music um uh, and cole and things like that oh you don't look old enough he's my favorite too I know. well you're a man for me enjoy tonight's show thank you very much what about you number three what's um, your name and where do you come from barry harmer i come from way and sorry what do you do for a living, look? Uh, design oil rigs and oil refineries. You design what? Oil rigs and oil refineries. Now, you sat at school and you said to yourself, when I leave school, <laughs> I'm going to design oil rigs. <laughs> Is that what you said? I did. Oh, you must be a clever lad. And I, I hope you have a lot of fun on tonight's show. See you, you in go. a moment. Thank See you, you later. Thank you. <laughs> Well, there are the lads, and that's the choice. And now for the girl who's going to make it. And she is Wendy Butterworth from Bradford, up there in Yorkshire. Come in, Wendy. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, it's a bit high, that. It's even high for me to sit on. But you made it quite good enough, Wendy. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And we've got three lovely lads. I tell you, I'll give you a clue to one of them. One designs oil rigs. <laughs> How does that grab you? As long as it's rich. <laughs> well, to find out. I won't tell you which one. What are your hobbies, Wendy? Um, patchwork, rugby. What? Do you play rugby? <laughs> my, uh, my local team down south. And what's your local team down south? Brighton. Now, you know, you know what the game's all about. You've got three yeah. questions. Mm -hmm to ask those fellas beyond those screens. And from their replies, you're gonna have to choose one of them. So uh, off you go with your first question, girl. Okay. Number one, how would you react if I smash your new car on the first day you had it? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it 
was a Porsche, oh, I wouldn't worry too much, as long as it wasn't one of the others. <laughs> one of the others. Number two, how would you react? I'd kill you. <laughs> Number three, how would you react? I'd go to Joyce. Be happy. Oh, you'd rejoice? Yes, yes. If I smash your car? Yes. Yeah, you'd drive happy. me to the parties. <laughs> so I can get happy and legless. No, I wouldn't that gets legless. Okay. Um, number three, what is the most macho thing about you? I like my phone book. <laughs> I make the phone book as well. That's the one of rejoice as well, you realise that? Mm-hmm. And number two, what's the most macho thing about you? Me. <laughs> uh, I, I would say, um, I would say my hair, you see. Uh, Your hair? Yes. It's got lovely well, hair. you know, mm -hmm. at least I've got mine compared to these two. <laughs> yes, yes. No, he is right. He's got lovely hair, that fella. It's got lovely hair. I don't know who it belongs to, but it's lovely hair. <laughs> He's got longer. Don't you like longer, Wendy? Yeah, it's quite nice. Yeah. Don't like hairy chest. No. Uh, well, we'll ask him. Have you got? <laughs> have you got an hairy chest? Uh, no. <laughs> I knew that. You see. <laughs> what was enough on his head to go round? <laughs> that was number two. Number one. What's the most macho thing about you? Uh, I guess I'm relaxed and calm. You should know all about that. Because I wasn't upset when you smashed my car up. <laughs> mm, OK, very interesting. Right, number one. Is this your third question That's now? right. Tell me frankly what you think a date would be like with number, uh, number two, if I had a date with number two. <laughs> no, you didn't say it wrong. You just haven't that. seen number two. <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend a night out with any of them, I think. <laughs> Number three looks like he has to be in by 10 o'clock. <laughs> Number two looks as though he doesn't have to be in at all. <laughs> so I guess you'd be better off with me. Number two, flat. what oh, would nice. a date be like with number three for me? With number three? Uh, well, he's all right if you like skinheads with tattoos and <laughs> bubble boots and things like that. But, you know, at least he'd be exciting standing on street corners and <laughs> smashing balls. I think that's about as far as you get with him. <laughs> OK, number three, what would a date be like with number one for me? Well, he's got such a red nose. He, just, he must be such an alcoholic. It's untrue. And the other guy, number two, he's got such red feet. He wouldn't be much cock either. Well, there's the three questions there. It's decision time for you. Well, will you choose number one, who is cool, calm, and wouldn't worry about you smashing the Porsche? Or number two, who says he has more hair than the others? <laughs> Or number three, who'd like you to show for him home from parties? <laughs> the decision is yours. Well, I think... Oh, Wendy, Wendy. Have you got any idea? Yeah. I'm well, sorry to um, disappoint number three. I'm sorry to disappoint number one. Number two. <laughs> The laughing is it terrible. <laughs> Have you got a sense of humour? <laughs> He's terrible. <laughs> I am only joking. I'm really only joking. But before you meet your man of your dreams, Wendy, <laughs> you're going to see who you turn down. And first of all, you turn down number three, and that was Barry. Palmer, and he was from Weybridge in Surrey, down here. Come in, Barry. <laughs> and also 
Wendy, you turned down number one, and that was Simon McCarthy. He, he was from Blackheath. Come in, Simon. <laughs> yes, get off, Simon. You went with the replies. <laughs> and it's your own fault if you don't like it. <laughs> oh, Geordie. You like Geordie? Oh, eh, pet. Mm. Oh, why, aye? Mm. Well, you shall have more than a fishy when his boat comes. <laughs> Because you chose Wendy St Standby Girl. You chose a lovely lad. His, he was number two, as you said, and his name is Matthew James Henry, and he's from Newcastle up there in Geordie Land. <laughs> she's not bothered about your head. She's no. just worried about your shoes. I can change them. I know, but where did you get those shoes, love? I got them in Newcastle. And I know, but you know, at a joke shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look ever so smart. I can take it. I've got broad shoulders, you know. I know. He's a lovely lad. Doesn't he look super, Wendy? Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad yourself. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the middle mm. here but you've got an important <coughs> thing to do now because you've got to choose and i think you know wendy should do it love don't definitely you? definitely you should choose where you're going on your away day <laughs> <laughs> and it's up to you girl right, go on okay. a day out in a roman caravan it's a day out in a, in a romany caravan, caravan. <laughs> grounds as wendy said you've got the old earrings in yeah you're looking forward to that yeah i've got a bit of gypsy in me you know have you yeah. which part of you is gypsy <laughs> that'd be telling yeah <laughs> but will you come back next week and tell which part of you is gypsy i certainly will you will i'm sure i'll find out <laughs> and what about wendy you'll bring wendy with you will oh, you oh definitely yes wendy how do you feel about him how do i feel about him yes he's got more jewelry on than me <laughs> You're gonna have a super time and please come back and tell us all about it because they are great sports ladies and gentlemen don't you think <laughs> when next week but this week we have Sheena and Mark and remember last time their date was a day out yachting on those happy snaps there but let's see what you really thought of each other something just said go for number three so he seemed a bit more genuine i think really than the other two not quite so full of themselves when i was picked i didn't realize that it was me at first <laughs> um, only realized when the other when the first person moved off and there have been jokes about his nose so that's the first thing i looked at but i wasn't that surprised by it, it wasn't that big, <laughs> noticeable but not that big being on a yacht makes it awkward to walk about and at first trying she was trying to keep her poise uh, but 
I think there was only one time when she stumbled. I wouldn't say she was going overboard. <laughs> I found my sea legs and we sailed and um, Mark was a superb companion. We really, I think we really got on well. She picked up what she had to pull and what she hadn't. Kind of <laughs> steering, which, um, and uh, went a little, of course, but not much. Just typical woman driver, but it was quite good. It's a good thing that she didn't go overboard. I was think I would have been compelled to go over for her, but had a little sniggle of doubt there. You know, the water looked a bit cold that day. We <laughs> been preparing a beautiful roast chicken dinner and all this sort of thing for us downstairs and carrots and sausages. And of course I let them do it, not being a domestic person. <laughs> it didn't worry me that she wasn't domesticated because I enjoy myself in the kitchen. But although I do like the person who I'm with to have a knowledge just in case I go wrong. I mean. Don't like burning the chickens. Mark seemed to uh, be enjoying it and enjoying playing mother. Not that she was gluttony or anything, but she enjoyed her food. Mark, with the harness, helped him getting up before he went up the mast, and I just gave him a nice little pat on the backside to help him on his way. Um, I think perhaps I was a bit envious. I, I would have liked to have gone up, I think. If she had been asked, I think she would have had second thoughts about it. You know, <laughs> like I think Mark was a, he was a genuinely nice person, really good character and we got on well together and he was a lot nicer than some of the uh, ones I could mention. <laughs> uh, I see a friendship building up. Uh, companionship, uh, not, maybe not romantically, we never know what could occur. I got on rather well with Mark, I thought, and he, and he was. He was fun to be with. I'm glad I went. Yeah, we had a good time together. that you got on better with him than he got on better with you, is that right? <laughs> well, no, I thought we were pretty friendly match. We just enjoyed it. But at the end there, he said, oh, you know, you wouldn't be romantically linked or anything like that, that you'd stay good friends. Is that how you feel? Oh, yes. Yes, I think so. Oh, but he's lovely. Oh, thank <laughs> he's you. lovely, but I think we just hit uh, it off well Just good time. friends. Just good friends. And you liked sailing on that yacht, didn't you? Oh, yes, very much indeed. Did you teach her any nautical expressions? <laughs> yes, A couple, did. yes, I think she can. Like what, for instance? Oh, so there was the Genoa sail, wasn't there? Yes. And the What's the Genoa sail? It's the sail at the front, isn't it? Yes. It's the main sail. She's got not that the right. main sail, the sail at the front of the yacht. There's two there. Yeah, then there was that, the main Is that sail. the sharp end? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you go out with them on a boat again? Oh, yes. Oh, well done. Well, thank you for joining us on Blind Date. And I'm so pleased that you had a good day out. And I hope the chicken and the carrots were lovely as well when you got them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear for Sheena and Mark. Thank you very much. You know, it's nerve-wracking enough meeting someone for the first time. Just think how terrible it must be doing it in front of all these people watching you on the telly. <laughs> but our other couple from last week, David and Caroline, will be doing just that in part two. And also, we'll be meeting the lucky man who will be taking his choice of these three lovely girls. <laughs> all that and more after the break. See you then. blind date where boy meets girl and girl meets boy and these are the three girls the boy is going to choose from tonight <laughs> three lovely lasses there what about you number one will you tell everybody your name and where you come from please my name is deborah alexander and i come from tonte near cardiff in wales <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, you've got a big family out there, haven't you? Are they so. all with you tonight? I hope so. Yes, what do you do for a living? Li so. Live, live, live. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Residential Deborah? social worker. Oh, that's absolutely super. Well done there. Mm. I hope you're going to have a lot, lot of fun on tonight's show. And lots of luck to you, Deborah, from Cardiff Thanks. in Welsh Wales there. <laughs> what about you, number two? Are you from Wales? No, um, my name's Jenny McGee, and I'm Jenny? from. Uh, Kilburn in North East, North East, North West London. <laughs> <laughs> Kilburn, that's in London. Oh, what 
do you do for a living, love? Well, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. I supervise the Central Information Unit at the London Visitor and Convention Bureau. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I am. Sorry, I mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean, all that? Well, we're the, um, we were the London Tourist Board, and that's our new name. So we basically tell tourists where to go. <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't we all like to tell tourists where to go sometimes? Well, well done. I hope you have lots of fun on tonight's show. What about you, number three? What, what's your name and where do you come from? My name's Avril Ashley and I come from Plumstead in South London. What do you do for a living? I'm a debt collector. <laughs> oh, dear, don't come knocking on my door. What did you used to do before that, though, Avril? Well, I've always been in the law. I've worked for a firm of solicitors for the last ten years, so I've done that ever since I've left school. Have you really? And what do you look for in your favourite man? Well, if he looked like Tom Selleck, I wouldn't be upset. Oh, dear. Did you, did you see him on the telly the other week? Yes, I did. He was lovely, wasn't he? <laughs> he danced with Princess Diana. Oh, I know. I was terribly jealous. I'll scratch her eyes out the next time I meet her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Avril, I hope you don't. But what I hope you do have is a lot of fun on tonight's show and lots of luck to all the three of you. Thanks. See you in a mo. <laughs> And now for the chap who has to choose. And he is Andy Cooley. He's from Woodley in Berkshire. Come in, Andy. <laughs> oh, you're a big lad for your mummy, aren't you, Andy? <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. How tall are you, Andy? A five foot seventeen. <laughs> Dear lady, then, what would she be like? Oh, short, fat and hairy, shall I? <laughs> well, we can't guarantee you that on tonight's show because our three ladies are absolutely lovely, aren't they, audience? Yeah. Yeah. And you've got three questions to ask those lovely ladies beyond those screens there, young man. Off you go with your first question, right, Andy. Right, here we go. What, if anything, do you think makes you attractive to the opposite sex? <laughs> Now, are you going to ask that too? I think I'll ask number one first. Number one. Off you go, number one. Well, I'm very, very friendly. And I'm very loyal. I'm a bit like a spaniel, really. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a cold nose as well. <laughs> I'll go for number two now. Number um, two. Well, I'm moderately, att moderately attractive. And You're lovely. <laughs> And I've got a nice personality, but I think the one thing in my favour is my tremendous bank account. <laughs> there you go. You've only got number three left with this question. What about you, number three? Well, I'm a bit of a mystery, really, and it's a mystery why anybody would find me attractive. Oh. <laughs> You've got another two questions to ask. What's your second this question? This is going to kill it, though, isn't it? Is it? How would you feel about going out a man with a man considerably shorter than yourself? Let's we'll start at number three. Number three. Do you like little fellas? <laughs> I love little fellas. I don't really mind, but provided he's not too small and I don't have to look too far. How small? <laughs> sort of further than my knees to see <laughs> don't, don't say any more. It's getting to sound worse. <laughs> but how small is too small, number three? Well, you see, I'm sort of six foot. And, um... You little lion. <laughs> <laughs> You're very tall, are you? Oh, extremely. With lovely mm. long legs. It's getting hot in here, isn't it? It's getting hot in here and she's quite tall. Very oh. attractive lady. That was number three. Who are you going to ask? We'll go down the line. Number two. Number two? To number two. Number two? Well, I've never really had this problem. Um, I mean, put it this way. Should our romance blossom and we set up home together, um, we'd not have much... We'd not sort of have much luck with the decorating, but I think we'd be very good at the gardening, because I'm, I'm pretty sort of near to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> She's a garden gnome. Oh. <laughs> Number one. Number one, what have you got to say for yourself, love? Well, I don't normally go around picking men up, but, I mean, if he was very, very short, then I'd pick him up to kiss him goodnight. Ah. <laughs> but you've got no danger with this one. <laughs> He's quite tall. You're a big lad, aren't you? Mm, I, I like to think so, Shelley, yes. <laughs> well, you've asked your second 
second question there, Andy. What about your third one? This is your third and final one. Is it a good question to oh, ask? Oh, I think so. What is it? Right, here we go. At your office party, you get caught behind the filing cabinet with the office Romeo. How do you explain that away? Who's that to? Well, start again at number one. Number one. Well, I'd tell them I was looking for Juliet, the office cat. <laughs> I've never actually been caught. I mean, I'm always much more careful than that. <laughs> You're always careful at Christmas parties and things like that? Yes. Oh, well, there you are. Very careful lady. Number two. Number two. Number two. What would you do if you got caught behind the filing cabinet at one of the office parties, love? Well, I'd be furious. I'd be really, really angry. And then I would really be, sort of blow my top with the person that interrupted us. <laughs> <laughs> Like to you. More encouraging. <laughs> well, that's only, that only leaves number three. How would you do, number three? Well, after I stopped blushing for the rest of the afternoon, I would say I was teaching our Romeo how to do the filing because unfortunately, our Romeo just doesn't know where to put everything. <laughs> You've got a difficult choice to make tonight, lad. You know, you've heard all them replies, and it's decision time again. But don't tell us yet, because we're going to find out exactly what those girls said. Now, I wonder, will it be number one, who says she's like a friendly spaniel and is good at looking for office cats? <laughs> or number two, who has a problem decorating, but no problem with her bank account? Or mysterious number three, who doesn't look down on the filing? <laughs> the decision is yours. Well, this is it, Andy. Are you ready? As ready as it'll ever be, silly, yes. No peeking over the screen. Have a quick look. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you chosen for your blind date this evening? Mm, no punches. Number two. Number two? <laughs> Number two, yeah. to meet the other two you said goodbye to. And first of all, you said goodbye to number three, and that was Avril Ashley from Plumstead in London. Come in, Avril. <laughs> and Andy. It's too late now. It's definitely walking back. You, you turned down number one, and that was Deborah Alexander, and she was from... Pontypridd in Cardiff. <laughs> oh, what do you think now, Andy? My knees are going funny, so I'll tell you that now. <laughs> oh, no. You chose number two, and her name was Jenny McGee, and she was from Kilburn in London. Nurse, the screen, please, for Andy. <laughs> You're going to look like Bill and Ben, the flower. <laughs> Isn't he tall, though, look? He's very tall. Let everybody at home see your lovely oh. face. Now you've got another decision to make. Or are you going to make it, or your lovely lady over I'll here? I'll pass the buck as usual. <laughs> You're going to do it? No, oh, all right, OK. Do okay. you mind? No, please, go ahead. <laughs> I'll look when they're all I nice. don't dare argue with them. Yes, where are you going on a blind day? What on a way day to Leeds Castle in Kent. <laughs> <laughs> mind you, you know, don't... Take any notice what this says. It does indeed, ladies and gentlemen, say an away day to Leeds Castle in Kent, but certainly is no just ordinary away day because you, you are going on the Orient Express. <laughs> you come back next week and tell us all about it will you do that we'd love to mm -hmm. god bless to the two of you ladies and gentlemen andrew and jenny be sure and come back next week. <laughs> now do you remember david and caroline from last week's show they went to paris for their day so let's see what happened to them very 
interesting, but let's find out what they really thought about each other. Have a look at this. When I first saw Karen, I thought, oh my God, I made a dreadful mistake. I thought he was really quite good looking. Perhaps a little bit effeminate with his trendy clothes and the sort of in-wear look. When I, when I spoke to her afterwards, um, she came across very well and um, seemed very, very bubbly and um, very good fun. And um, I think I, you know, made, made quite a good choice. And I think she's obviously quite, quite lucky to, to you know, have been picked by me. He <laughs> fancied himself a bit. Arriving at the airport, I didn't feel altogether too good, although I don't think I looked too bad. He looked absolutely like death warmed up. He <laughs> slept all night. I haven't had much sleep myself, but I suggested to him at that point that he went to buy a box of matchsticks to support his eyelids. She also didn't look that good. She looked as though she had been out quite late as well, which I thought wasn't very right, as I think she would have probably stayed in and made more of an effort. It was probably one of Paris's coldest days for about the last 20 years. It was freezing. It was absolutely freezing in the Eiffel Tower, and um, Caroline very generously um, offered to lend me her scarf, which I think showed a, a very generous side to her nature. And uh, I don't know if she left her cold or not. I, I didn't bother to ask her. He started trying to pretend that he knew all the points that he could see around Paris. And kept on asking me what places were that we could see from there. And he hadn't really got a clue. He had to keep on looking at the map to find out. She may need freshening up. So I tried to throw her in the fountains at the bottom of the Sacre Coeur. Which she didn't really seem, seem to mind. I couldn't believe this. And I was just about to get really annoyed because there was sort of games and games, but being thrown in the fountain would have been a case of me leaving and going straight to the airport. So I ended up putting a dustbin and walking off in, in disgust. He knew how to be um, a gentleman. I think overall, Caroline was a, a very good choice to go along with. Um, she had an incredible zest for life. We shared a, a, a wonderful sense of fun together, and she didn't, didn't, didn't mind my hijinks throwing her in fountains and the like. He was great fun, very bubbly. I mean, if I, when I'm picking out the bad points in him, he's the biggest name dropper on earth. Oh, I mean, he'd sort of say, oh, you must come and stay in Gustad or something like this. Um, I would probably quite like to see her again. And um, quite obviously, she, she'd like to see him see me again, as I think she was quite lucky to have got him in the first place. Well, that's what do you think of him saying he was, you were very lucky to have him? on this date. I mean, what do you think about that? Well, I would have put it the other way around, actually, that he was lucky getting me, but... I would agree with that, Carol. <laughs> I totally agree with that. And what about... Oh, look at... Um, you went to Paris. I mean, you, all you did was complain. I mean, she said, you know, you knew about name dropper, all the rest of it, and you pretended that you could... You know, you knew all the land spots and everything. Was there anything in Paris, either of you, I'll ask you the first question, that you found romantic, anything at all? Um... <laughs> no. Yeah, well, no. Oh. No, no, no. What do you think? I'm asking well, you. No, you well, I don't know. I, 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 it was actually too cold to be romantic, I think. But what about Paris itself? You like Paris? Yeah, it's lovely. You'd go again? Oh, yes. But it, not in the cold weather? No, when it is warm. Oh, OK. What about you, Caroline? What did you like about Paris? Anything romantic? I think the same. If it was a bit warmer and we'd actually... The bateau mouche would have been romantic if we were having dinner on the well, bateau if, mouche. Well, if, if we hadn't fallen asleep. And it was so cold and we were so tired. Oh, I'm talking to her. <laughs> if we hadn't, if you hadn't fallen asleep. You fell asleep? <laughs> he had been down the bateau mouche about 40 times before, so... And so you fell asleep. Oh, mm. that's very romantic. <laughs> that's what I thought. And the next time when you go out with a girl, you know, instead of putting the girl in the dustbin, I suggest you put your suit. <laughs> 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 it's good for you, never take it. Well, I'm sorry. If you, if you don't really like my suit, I'm sorry. I mean, if you, if you don't like it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You've been great sports, whatever happens. And thank you for coming back and telling us all about it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, David and Caroline. just now but next week Wendy and Matthew and Andrew and Jenny will be back to tell us all about their days out together so make a date and join us then for some more blind dates until then ta everyone <laughs> <laughs>